It is a time of year when many people go back to the beginning and read once again from the book of Genesis. It is an amazing account of the origins of the planet, the plant life, the animal life, the human being. So very few words, and yet so impactful. As we reach the account of the fourth day, we find these words in Genesis 1.14. And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. We see that they were not made to bring the light. The light was already available on day one, so they must serve a greater purpose. Previously, I talked about the sun, moon, and stars representing the Father, the Son, and us. Did you know that God can bring more than one lesson from the same verse? This is the principle behind a study technique known as pardes. If you haven't already studied pardes, which is spelled P-A-R-D-E-S, I suggest you go over to my YouTube channel or anywhere else and watch some videos or read some articles. In a nutshell, there are four levels of interpretation, but to get a better understanding, you can see some concrete examples if you watch the videos. Genesis 1.14 gives four significations to the lights. They are for 1. Signs, 2. Seasons, 3. Days, and 4. Years. If we match these up to the Pardes levels, we will see something interesting. The word for sign in Hebrew is ot. It's not oath, as pronounced in some places. There is no longer a th sound in Hebrew, even if there ever was one. Always remember, there are no recordings of Moses, so no one really knows what it sounded like back in the day. Ot is an Aleph Tav word. Aleph is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and Tav is the last letter. The two letters together are a grammatical sign for the direct object of the sentence. They also tie together the beginning and the end. Yeshua more likely said, I am the Aleph and the Tav, than I am the Alpha and the Omega. According to the Pardes, the signs are established in and for the forefathers and remain with us as symbols of Yehovah's promises. This is the Peshat, the plain meaning of the text. There are different kinds of signs, and not all of them are in the sky. In fact, the first ot, sign, to be given is the mark of Cain. It is a sign of God's protection over him. Even the worst sinner has the opportunity to walk under the shadow of the Most High in order to be comforted by him while the sinner bears his punishment. The second sign given is in the sky, and it is the rainbow, a sign of the covenant between Yehovah and all creation, that the waters will not flood the earth again. Genesis 8.22 While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night, shall not cease. And again in Jeremiah 31.35-36 Thus says Yehovah, which gives the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon, and of the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yehovah of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from me, says Yehovah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. In other words, ain't happening. The third sign given in the scripture is that of circumcision given to Abraham. Others include those given to Moses and to Pharaoh, to the children of Israel in the wilderness. The Sabbath is also counted as a sign of the covenant between Yehovah and his people. And what specifically about the signification of the sun, moon, and stars? These all hold predetermined places in the sky, and the ancients were able to navigate by them. They were also able to read the story of the good news of a Savior to come through the progression of the constellations beginning at Virgo the Virgin and ending at Leo the Lion. Yehovah showed Abraham, through the numbers of stars, the number of his descendants, and they remain in the sky for us to see, although at the end of time they will fall. As it is written in Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. As time went on and other civilizations perverted the meanings of these signs in the sky, Yehovah gave this warning in Jeremiah 10.2. Thus says Yehovah, Learn not the way of the heathen, 
and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. We, on the other hand, are to remember the promises, the connection from the beginning to the end. The signs, otot in plural, are established in the forefathers. The positions of the sun, moon, and stars over the course of the year also mark the seasons, the moedim, the appointed times. Chief among these are the festival days given in Leviticus 23, and these correspond with the remez, the hint level of the text. These hints usually reveal something about Messiah, and these certainly do. The very first time Moed is mentioned is for the time of the birth of Isaac. It is a set time of year. Did you notice in Genesis 19.3 that in the season of the angel's visitation with Abraham, they went to Sodom, and Lot baked unleavened bread for them. It is a specific season. In this cycle of appointed times, we see that Passover is the sacrificed lamb, the season of Yeshua's crucifixion. Unleavened bread shows the sinlessness of Messiah, and the beginning of the counting of the Omer is his resurrection day. He is the first fruits of the dead. As it is written in 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty through 23 but now is Messiah risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Messiah shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Messiah the first fruits, afterward they that are Messiahs at his coming. The next appointed time is Pentecost, or Shavuot, and it marks the giving of the Spirit. In the future, we can expect Yeshua's return in the season of trumpets and the Day of Atonement, as he arrives on the Mount of Olives, and as the Days of Judgment take place. Finally, there is Sukkot, Tabernacles, the time when he will dwell with us again, this time forever. These seasons, these Moedim, the appointed times, belong to the appearance and work of Yeshua on the earth and in the believer. The third signification is the days. A day is defined in Genesis as one 24-hour period, and we measure them by the appearance of the sun. At a third level, a drosh or devotional understanding, the days belong to us. We measure our time in days, as is written in many places, Genesis 5.5, 5, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Exodus 23.26 there shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in your land. The number of your days I will fulfill. Psalm 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalm 39, 4. Yehovah, make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Genesis 47, 9. And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers, and the days of their pilgrimage. This is how we live our lives, involved in the daily tasks. Yeshua taught us to ask for our daily bread. The days are the steps of our lifelong journey. We are to parse out how to behave each day in every situation in a way that honors Jehovah, our Maker, that reflects His image to the outside world for His glory. The days remind us of the mortality of this life. Psalm 103, 15 and 16. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Psalm 144, verse 4. Man is like to vanity, his days are as a shadow that passes away. The days belong to us. The final level is given to the sod, the secret or hidden meanings. This is where we find the years, shanim in Hebrew. The root for the word shana is a verb meaning to change. Wherever there is mention of years, change has either already come or is on the horizon. This root is also related to the word for the number two, which is a change, that is, something different from the number one. Other related words include old, which is a kind of change, teeth, which change, we get two sets, and sleep, a different state of consciousness. 
Although we know there will be changes in the future, we do not know what they will look like. Even the rabbis have said that in the time of Messiah, the commandments will be changed. Rabbi Shimon ben Eliezer, who was active from about 170 to 200 of the Common Era, declares in Talmud Tractate Shabbat 130, This is how it will be in the days of the Messiah. There will be no thou shalt and thou shalt not commandments. As it is written in Isaiah 64, 4, For since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither has the eye seen, O God, besides you, what he has prepared for him that waits for him. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The years belong to the hidden, the as yet unrevealed future. Signs, appointed times, days and years, all in place since the fourth day of creation. And the sun.